In today's uh, lecture, we will discuss about high performance liquid chromatography, which is also studied under the title high pressure liquid chromatography, and it is uh, uh, shortly known as HPLC. HPLC. So, what will we discuss in our this lecture? We will discuss chromatography. What is chromatography? Introduction of the HPLC. The main components of any type of chromatography and the main components of the HPLC. The instrumentation of this HPLC, uh, working principle and the types of HPLC. We will know about all, okay? So let's start from the very first one, the chromatography. What is chromatography? It is a technique used to separate the components of mixture. So it is a kind of technique in which we are actually separating the components of the mixture. So we have any kind of mixture if you want to separate its components. So then that is actually called as chromatography. Separation of the components of a mixture is called actually chromatography. Now what is HPLC? As the name indicates high performance liquid chromatography. Now this technique, by this technique, if we are separating the components of the mixture, those components are actually separated with very high resolution. Means the result is very clear due to which we call uh, this chromatography by the name high performance liquid chromatography. One thing is clear because its result is clear. Now the question rises is that why its result is clear? Why its performance is best? The reason behind is we are using the stationary phase of very small size and we are also using the pressure pump. Now due to these two factors our performance of separation is very good. Due to this but high performance this type of chromatography is now is high performance liquid chromatography and we mentioned that this uh, topic is studied under the next term that is high pressure liquid chromatography and it is obvious that we are using the pressure due to which this chromatography is also known as high pressure liquid chromatography and now uh, we cleared our concept regarding the high performance or high pressure uh, and uh, chromatography the remaining term is liquid now what is this liquid for this liquid is actually indicating our mobile phase the mobile phase that we are using in our this chromatography is liquid that's why our this chromatography is called as high performance liquid chromatography or high pressure liquid chromatography i think it's clear now the name is clear now let's come towards the next point that is it is also called as modified column chromatography that involve application of the pressure so you can also say that this is actually a kind of modified form of the column chromatography now this is modified just because of what because of the uh, pressure we are using here high pressure so if we just uh, remove this pressure from here it will be our simple column chromatography now here we are actually using our pressure pump due to this this is actually known as modified column chromatography now let's come towards the main components of any chromatography if you talk about chromatography so in every chromatography we are using two main components the mobile phase and stationary phase mobile phase is the phase that is actually moving okay and stationary phase is the phase that is actually standing or stagnant phase now these two phases are actually helping us to separate our mixture into components now let's come towards the next point the phases of HPLC are the main components of our HPLC so it's obvious the main components are the mobile phase and stationary phase but what type of the main components we are using so the type of the stationary phase that we are using in our HPLC is silica or we can use alumina or cellulose we can use any but more often used is actually the silica and uh, regarding the mobile phase we are using the solvent or mixture of solvent these may be polar or non-polar organic or inorganic now it is depending upon uh, what type of the chromatography you are performing and we will discuss about the types of the chromatography here now let's come towards the next point that is the instrumentation or the materials required to perform this HPLC we need a solvent reservoir we need a pressure pump sample injector and we need a column in which we are supposed to put our stationary phase and we need here a detector along that we need a collecting tube a read out device so these are the instruments required now how these instruments work so we will know it's in the working here now simple now from this uh, solvent reservoir we will actually pump out by means of a high pressure pump our the solvent will be pumped out and this pressure actually ranges from 35 megapascal to 45 megapascal we can use uh, an average value that is 40 megapascal so we actually reach up to 40 megapascal pressure and then this pressure by means of this pressure our this mobile phase is actually run through this stationary phase 
and in the meanwhile we actually inject here our sample now what will happen to our sample consider we have one two three four five components in our this mixture now this is actually a mixture our sample which we are going to actually uh, separate into components so what will happen mobile phase will actually carry this uh, mixture with itself and as the mobile phase is moving through the stationary phase then our this mixture will start separating now the separation is done by two main factors number one mobile phase number two stationary phase now the components that are having high interaction with the stationary phase they will move very slow and the components that are having high interaction with the mobile phase they will elute out fast with the mobile phase so this is the reason behind why our components are separated the reason is their interaction with the stationary phase and mobile phase due to this changed kind of interaction with the mobile phase and stationary phase our components will separate consider the component number one it has high interaction with the stationary phase so it will uh, stay or it, you can say it will move very slow then we have component number two which is having a little bit uh, less interaction with the stationary phase like this three and four and five number five it has interaction more with the uh, mobile phase is compared to the stationary phase so it will move first with the mobile phase first of all mobile phase will move and uh, after that the very first component that is moving is the component number five which is having high interaction with our mobile phase so due to which this will elute out first and this one it has very less interaction with our mobile phase due to which it is moving very slow and like this our components are separated so what will happen here is our mobile phase reach here detector will detect its mobile phase after that our component from the mixtures they will come one by one and here in the collecting tube we will collect our mobile phase and our components so like this we will be collecting here and the detector will be uh, in the meanwhile detector will be detecting our these components after that it will send the signal to the radio device and finally we will get this kind of a graphical representation now this graph on x-axis it is representing the retention time and on y-axis it is representing the concentration on x-axis the retention time it means the time that the components of the mixture are actually consuming uh, in the stationary phase so this is actually the time after that what will we do we will just uh, compare our this particular graphical representation with already standards available means we do have some standards before we are performing any kind of practical work we have a standard already now result and the next is the result that we get through our practical we will compare our this result with already now result then we can easily tell that what kind of mixtures were present on our this sample so this is how we actually get the perfect understandings about the components of the mixture and another very important point that i want to mention here is about these peaks the first peak that is uh, going to be formed here this is actually supposed to be of the very first sample which was having very high interaction with our mobile phase and remember our mobile phase may be polar may be non-polar and the same is the case with our stationary phase it may be polar it may be non-polar and i mentioned it early that uh, this will be uh, taught to you guys here in this portion types of the chromatography well the very first peak is of the that component which was having high interaction and the second peak will be of the component which was having a little bit less interaction with our mobile phase so like this our graphical representation will be formed and then we will compare this with our standards and we will get the perfect understandings now let's know about the types of the chromatography hplc the very first one is normal phase hplc normal phase hplc in normal phase hplc hplc we you know that we are using stationary phase and mobile phase uh, in the chromatography so in normal phase hplc chromatography our stationary phase will be polar and our mobile phase will be non-polar got this is the very basic understanding regarding our normal phase hplc and reverse phase hplc our stationary phase will be non-polar and right let me write here reverse phase chromatography and our mobile phase will be polar so you can just actually uh, do the reverse of this one normal phase now just do one thing just learn the normal phase hplc you will learn the uh, reverse phase hplc automatically how like one trick is here simple trick right here n from the normal phase and p from the stationary phase and do have a dot between them after that from the mobile phase write the np 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 your first n is telling you about the normal phase hplc type next p is telling you about the stationary phase 
and the third NP is telling you about the mobile face. So in short, this is a trick for you guys to remember, to memorize, or to do differentiate between these two easily. In normal phase, HPLC, we are using stationary phase, polar, mobile phase, non-polar. Okay? Remember NP, NP like. Just go opposite of this, you will get the reverse phase. So now what is our reverse phase, stationary phase? Simple. Go opposite. Here we have P, right here, NP. And here we have NP right here P. So it will become our reverse phase. R N P A P. R N double P. Well, just learn or memorize the very first one, this one. Uh, I myself am going through this one, this example. NP NP. Means this is the trick through which I memorized this type a uh, normal phase HPLC. And just uh, I'm going against this trick, get this one, reverse phase. I think it's clear now. The next one is size exclusion. Again, stationary phase. So in this type of chromatography, our stationary phase will be uh, separating our components on the basis of sizes. Now this uh, type of chromatography will use uh, the stationary phase of porous nature. Now this porous stationary phase will allow large size particle to pass through it and it will just actually uh, hold small size particles. We will explain these in our next videos also. But just here gain the very basic concept. And regarding ion exchange, our stationary phase will be actually of ion type. Means we will use ionized stationary phase. So this is a little bit regarding the types. And we will explain the types in our next videos, inshallah. If you guys ask for that, then. Otherwise, I think it's easy now here to understand. So I hope you got, if still you have any kind of question, feel free to ask us in the comment box. We are there to help you guys. Thank you for watching.